Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. And yes, it is time. This is your sign to up your prospecting game. And this is another live session that I'm doing. Hey, it, wherever you are in the world, sound off. Let me know where you're watching from. It's always great. We always get at least five different continents and it's it's amazing. Anyway, hey, what are we talking about here today? About how to make the phone ring. Now, hey, what I'm talking about is content that comes from my online program. We were named as one of the top 10 sales development programs in the world. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And we got, we got the new prospecting program out. And over the last several weeks on these live sessions, I've been talking about, you know, how do you, how, how do you make outbound calls? Well, now I want to flip it around a little bit. I want to flip it around here and share with you some thoughts and ideas as to how to make the phone ring. So now if you haven't been following suit, and of course, if you haven't been prospecting, you know that prospecting is not exactly um, the easiest thing in the world. Hey, we got we got Savannah, Georgia in the house. We're going stateside. We've got England in the house already. And we've got Florida in the house. We've got the Eastern time zone covered. Let's hear from some of the other time zones. Let's hear from other countries around the world. Anyway, here's what we're talking about. Prospecting it really doesn't matter how we get leads. We just want to get leads. But one of the things that I found is that you can make the telephone ring. Now, <clears throat> I'm not talking about pure inbound stuff, okay? I'm not talking about stuff that just, just rolls in. But I'm talking about stuff that you create. Hello from Chile. Good to see you. Great. We have got South Africa in the house. We have got Austin, Texas in the house. Man, we've got people popping in. We got Mississippi in the house. We got New York in the house. We've got people from all over. This is absolutely terrific. We got Mexico in the house. It's great. I love having you here. So let's talk about how we get people really happening to make the phone ring. Let me acknowledge some more people. We got hey, hi. Where I, I don't know where you're where you're checking in from. Throw your country up there. We have West Texas. We have. Um, Tunisia, man, we got we got a great global. We got more people globally than we do locally. Got another person from the UK. Good afternoon, or I should say, good evening to London. This is absolutely terrific. We got Guatemala in the house. We got Montreal in the house. It is incredible. Everybody that's chiming in this is great. So let, let's talk about how do we make the phone ring? Okay, here, here's the situation. You've been you've been reaching out to people, and man, they are just not responding. Here's the thing, though. Keep going. And my goal is how do I get them to actually call me? Now, I'm not saying that this is a silver bullet, okay? This is not a silver bullet. Hello, India. Great to have Bangalore in the house. We got PDX Oregon. That's that's Portland. Hey, I used to live in Portland. Used to live off the Banfield Freeway, if you know where that is, out in East Portland. And uh, let's see, we've got... Um, Mexico and I think I already called out. Oh, we got Bangalore, India. Good afternoon. Good evening, I should say. We have another person from India, New Delhi. This is absolutely terrific. So anyway, okay, back. What we're talking about is I, I'm sending emails out. I'm sending correspondence out, but I want to get people to be picking up the phone and calling me. How do I do this? Now, this is not a perfect world. It's not like you're going to get massive sums, but it's amazing how many people can. So let's walk through some things that you can do. One of the things I love doing, is I may have had a prospect that I've been reaching out to. I've been sending some things to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to email them key points of a news article, something I've seen online. If I've connected with them, I'll go ahead and send them the link to that. If I haven't connected with them, in other words, if they haven't responded to me, I'm a little hesitant to send them the link. And here's why. Because sometimes the spam uh, filters will pick that up and block it. But if they've maybe had just a little bit of a cursory response to me, I'll go ahead and send them the link on and, and, and I'll include in it just maybe a couple, hey, I saw this and really it, curious as to how it's impacting your industry. I love doing that strategy. We have Macedonia in the house. We have Algeria in the house. This is absolutely terrific. We've got Chicago in the house. This is, <clears throat> we've got probably our biggest audience globally here today. And that's absolutely terrific. Now, here's the whole situation. What am I doing here? I am I am sending out an email of something of pertinent interest to them. And I'm including a couple of bullet points in there. Say, hey, love to get your feedback. Love to get your thoughts. Or I've got more information. What I can do is I can send them out a white paper. Hey, I got a white paper. It's a six-page white paper. Really impactful. And I just list two bullet points. Email me. Call me. Let's connect. And I'll send it to you. 
again, that's a real easy way to try to get response. Now, those are kind of some generic tools that I can keep. If I'm doing a typical um, industry prospecting, I can have three or four things that I just have in the queue. But one that I love doing, I got to call out some more places. We've got Dubai in the house. We've got Dallas in the house. We've got all the world. I love that. I love that. And we've got Savannah, Georgia in the house. This is absolutely terrific. Keep those countries coming wherever countries, states, provinces. We haven't had any. Yeah, we got a Montreal in here. So we do have Canada in the house. Here's the other piece I love doing. Play to the critical news in the industry. I did this just recently, okay? I do a fair amount of work in the transportation industry. And I've got probably about 10 or 20 prospects that I've had a little bit of response with, but never been able to cultivate. Well, I saw an article, online article on supply chain issues. And I immediately sent that out to them. And I just included a couple bullet points, my commentary. And I got two of, I think I sent about 16 or 18. I got two of them to actually respond back. One of them actually did call me, did call me. And it's creating a conversation. So what I love about that is I'm playing to the critical news that's happening in the industry. Here's why this is relevant. Because many times what you're doing is you're alerting this customer, this prospect, to something they weren't even aware of. And what do they do? They immediately see you as being part of the industry. Hey, we got we got Miami Beach in the house. This is great. We got Westchester, PA. And I'm not sure. Ben, yes, we got you in the house, Tunisia. I love that. I love that. Hey, here's the situation, though. When I can send something current, something relative, Again, it makes people say, wow, this person really knows my industry. This person really knows who I am. I love doing that. Another thing I love to do is make a very exclusive offer. Now, there's a little bit of a risk to this. When I mean an exclusive offer, you say, hey, I've only got available to do this with three customers, with three prospects. We can do this review. We can do this assessment. We can do something. And you send that out. So, hey, if, 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 if you're interested, give me a buzz back quickly. And you put urgency behind it. And it's maybe it's three. It's maybe it's just four. But I love doing that. Why? Because, again, it makes it feel like they're getting an exclusive deal from you, exclusive offer. So it may be, hey, we've got capability to do an assessment. We've done this with other companies. And I can do this assessment with you, but I can only do it with three prospects, with, with three. So, if, you know, I'm sending this out to some people. First three to respond back can have that. Or you can play at, eh, not send it, say it's only just a three. Just send it to them and say, hey, if you can call me back today, I can get this arranged for you. Either way you play, you're, you're offering up something of an exclusive type of things. Now, here's the thing. What you want to do is you want to offer something or put something that you don't dare put into an email. Now, here's why. If you put it into an email, you run the risk that it's going to come back to haunt you six months later. In other words, what what, what did I just say? Well, what I did was I called you and I left you a voicemail. Hey, I've got some exclusive stuff that I, that I can make available to you and I'm calling you, but I really like to have you call me back here. Now, see, if it's something like that, what I'm doing is I'm actually calling them. And the reason I'm calling them back is this very simple reason. If I put it in writing, and I've had this come back to bite me a number of times. I've put it in to a video or I put it into something and say, hey, I've got this available for you. Uh, Email me back and I'll send it to you. Two, three, four years later, somebody reaches out to me and sends it to me. Okay, I'm happy to get the lead. I'm happy to get that. I get it. But man, I've moved on. I'm on to something else. And sometimes it creates for a little bit of an awkward conversation. So if it is a limited and it is a short term and it is seasonal, put it into a voicemail. Voicemail only with them. And there's also something special about the voicemail you leave them. It just has a little sense of urgency versus an email. Hey, I wanted to try to reach you. I was hoping to kind of catch you today. We've got this available and it's only, a, you know, I'm not sure how long we'll have it. Call me back. Because the other thing you don't want is you don't want them taking that offer if it's an email and using it against you in some other manner or using it with a competitor some other manner down the road. Okay.
Let's talk about date sensitive deadlines. Now, this is always a great way and I can do date sensitive deadlines and I can do this by way of email. Now, we're coming up here onto the fourth quarter. A few more weeks, we're going to start the fourth quarter. And so you can easily do this with prospects. You can send out emails. Hey, we've got enough supply left here coming into the end of the year, but if, but you're going to need to get your orders in now because otherwise we will run out. And I can go ahead and put that into an email because I'm making it date specific. If it's date specific, I can put it into an email. And I'm going to go ahead and blast those emails out. And I'll say, hey, but boy, don't email me. Call me. Call me. Now, here's the advantage of the call versus the email. If you set it up to where they email you, you're setting yourself up that they're going to start trying to pick you apart on this and that, and this and that, this and that. What I want to do is I want to get into a conversation. And if I get into a conversation, I can begin to understand faster what is their need, what is the real critical issue that they have, and I can address them better. I always say this. I can find out more information in a one-minute phone call than I can in probably three or four emails. Hey, we got a question that has come in. Let's go and put this question up there. How do you handle customers who hang up midway during introduction call when they pick the call up? Oh, this is key. I tell you what, this, this is what, why. Uh, go back. I believe it was the second video I did. Go out to my YouTube channel. But I talked about the intro, the first five seconds. And it's very important that in that first five seconds, you've got to engage. You've got to ask them a question. So what I'll do is I'll sit there and say, hey, Raul, Mark, I've got information. I'm really curious as to how you're handling this. So I really, I just come right in on a question. I don't spend time introducing myself. I don't spend time introducing my company. I don't spend time saying, hey, how's the weather? I come right in with a question. Hey, Raul. This is Mark Hunter, I'm really interested in into how your company's handling X. And they're going to sit there and say, who the heck are you? And I say, well, hey, I'm, I'm Mark Hunter. And, and I've helped other companies just like yours with that same issue. How are you handling it? You see what I did was I, I, I just did a little bit of a clarifying statement and I came right back and I asked you the question. See, I'm looking to engage you in that question immediately. That's how I keep people from hanging up. Now, it's not perfect. There will still be people who hang up from you, you know, hang up on you, but that's okay. I don't worry about that. Okay, let's go back. Let's talk about some more of the pieces that, that, that I have here. One of the things is you can offer bonus consulting services. Now, this is a little bit similar to what I talked about earlier, but I love this strategy in that I'm going to offer something additional, you know, but hey, you've got a call and we can discuss further. You, you, you've got to call. In other words, what you can sit there and do is you can you can call people and sit there and say, hey, we've got four engineers on, on site that and right now they're not booked. You know what? They've got some open time. And I can set one of them up with you. Give me a buzz. Call me. I, I don't think this open time is going to remain on their calendar for very long. Boom. And it's amazing how quickly I can get somebody to respond. So I love offer some sort of a boat. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Hey, we provide this assessment. I was on, I was doing a call this morning with a company, with a company in uh, Europe. And they want me to do some work with them. And I could immediately come back and relate to another company, very similar company I worked with about 20 years ago. And I was able to help them through it. And I said, yeah, I, I, I know I can, I can make some of this stuff happen because we've got all this insight. What does it do? It raises the value raise the value. Another idea you can do is you provide what I call an open office solution. What's an open office solution? This is where you have subject matter experts in your company. Now, you got to arrange this beforehand. Don't go into this without arranging this beforehand, but we'll say you've got a couple subject matter. It's very similar to the consulting service opportunity, but you have people and you sit there and say, hey, would you be available this afternoon? If, 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 I, if I can get somebody on the phone, could you make 15 minutes for them? Could you make 20 minutes for them? And if you get them, then you call them. You call prospects. You call prospects. Don't email them. Call them and say, hey, 
we've got an engineer right here. He's available. He's got open office time right now. And I, I think he might be able to help craft a solution for this. And again, it's a great way. Yeah. But it's relying on other people in your organization. Hey, we got Sal Paulo in the house. Let me get that up there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to Sal Paulo. Great, great to hear from you. Here's what we're talking about. I'm wanting to get people engaged. And one of the easiest questions or one of the two ones that I like is you ask them for their opinion. You ask them for their feedback. You may have run a survey on LinkedIn. I do this quite a bit. I will not hesitate to run a survey on um, LinkedIn. And I take the results and then I then use them in phone calls the following week. And I'll sit there and say, hey, we just did a survey last week and we had 900 people respond to it. And the results were, I don't know, I was kind of, I was shocked. I, I was surprised by them. And I'd really like to get your input on it. Call me. That is a great approach because I can put a survey out on LinkedIn and I get hundreds of people to respond very quickly. And what does it do? It gives me credibility. Hey, we got some more questions that have come in. Mark, you're awesome. I have YouTube premium. And yes, all your I downloaded all my videos and listen regularly. Hey, keep keep on downloading. We, we keep putting tons of stuff out there for you. Uh, thanks, Mark. Hey, thanks, Mark. Sounds like I answered the question. Oh, we got Nigeria in the house. Great to have Nigeria in the house. Terrific. I do some great work with people over in Nigeria and incredible business insight there. Wonderful to have you. But I love doing this. I LinkedIn survey, and then I play that back out to people in phone calls or emails the following week. See, I can even put that into an email. What I'll do is, hey, we just did a survey and we had results. Boom, boom, boom. Love to get your feedback on this. Love to get your opinion on this. And I'll share with you some of the comments we heard. And again, then what I, what I can do, I can play back the comments I got from the survey. Yeah. We've got other people jumping in here. What's your least favorite part of the sales process? Wow. Um, you know what? There is none. Well, he, no, no. The least favorite part is when somebody ghosts me, ghosts me. I hate that. I hate that. But you know what? It drives me to a higher level of saying, I've got to be creating more value. I've got to create more value. So if there's a least favorite part, it is it is the ghosting. I love prospecting. I love prospecting. And when I prospect, it's not like I'm cold calling. I'm warm calling because I know this business. I know, you know what? These people I know I can help. And I'm going to reach out to them because I know I can help them. I'm so firmly committed in how I can help them. We, we get through the negotiating process or, you know, we go through the negotiating process and, and they want to challenge me on price. Or they want to challenge me on some other issues. I love that process. And I love that process because you know what? I stand behind the value. And if you're going to buy me on price, I don't want you. I do not want you. Yeah. I know that sounds weird, but you see sales is a two way street. You, the customer have got to like me and I've got to like you. And if you're only going to buy me on price, I'm not going to have you. If all you're doing is selling on price, if that's the only way you get business, you better ask yourself, what is the value you're creating? Because you're not creating enough value. Hey, we have Ghana in the house. Another person from India. Terrific. Let's see. Um, how do you turn not interested into interest? OK, now there are some not interested people you will never you will never make interested. That's just that's just the way it is. OK. And, and again, I'm not out to try to get every prospect I touch base with to become a customer. That, that's a folly. That, that is a fool's folly. What, I'll, what I do is I say, if I target my prospect list around my ideal customer profile and stay very specific and stay tight, I will be able to convert many of those people in, into customers. So if somebody is not interested and I've done all I can, then I just have to, I just have to say, walk, walk away. You know, there are some people out there who say, I'm going to stay focused with you until you buy or die. I don't believe that. Here's why. If I'm selling you, if I'm selling a $5 million deal or a million dollar deal, yeah, you believe me, believe me, I'm going to stay focused on you because that's a big deal. But if what I'm selling is $29, $39, $59, I'm not going to do that. It's not worth my time. It's not worth my time. So the level of cycles, the level of repetitions I'm going to do is going to be based on the value of what it is that I'm selling. 
So again, there's some people I will never get interested and I'm not going to worry about that. Here's another question. How do you predict that the prospect is on the way to ghost a salesperson? You really can't. Probably the biggest way that I found, and it's not proven by any means, there's no statistical evidence behind it, is they simply just don't respond. You know, you may be having a conversation, but you're doing all the talking. They're just not engaged with you. That's probably the best way that I found. But again, there, there's no perfect way. Because I've had people who will engage with me, be very active with me, and then suddenly they ghost me. And what they're doing is they're not ghosting me. They're ghosting me because of other issues they have in their company. See, so sometimes when people ghost you, it's not that they don't value what you have. It's just that there's something else that's come up. So I got to stay current. I got to stay in the game. I got to keep playing. I got to keep coming because eventually that's going to come back around. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about some more ways to get the phone to ring. One is uh, or another one is I'm going to ask them a strategic question about their business or industry. And I just simply put this into an email. Hey, how is your company responding to this? Call me. Love to find out. I've got results from a number of other companies. Or I put that in a voicemail. I can put that into an email or a voicemail, but I simply ask them a question about their industry. In my prospecting, and when I work with companies, when I work with people, and I, hey, you know what? I haven't talked about this for a second. I do want you to check this out, please. I, I, I really do want you to jump out to learn.thesalescenter.com because we got the new phone prospecting masterclass out there and tons of techniques, 33 page workbook, tons of things out there. Go out there and check that out. And we got a ton of other uh, masterclasses out there that are out there. One on email, we've got a whole prospecting one. We've got a number of them. Check those out because I really do encourage you to take advantage of it or become an all access member. That's really the, the best way. But again, like what I'm doing here is sharing a lot of this content from these master classes in these respective in these respective videos. Now let's jump back to this whole thing of of a, a strategic question about their business or industry. The reason I like business or industry is because it's specific to them. The tighter I can make the question relevant to them. I have even done things where I see a company is hiring a tremendous number of people. And it's very obvious that they're struggling. It's very obvious that they're having a difficult time. I'll sit there and I'll pop them an email or I'll leave them a voicemail. Hey, I, I see you're trying to hire a lot of people. I, I've got some ideas. I've got some strategies for you. Give me a call. Now, you better make sure you have something. But again, I will not hesitate to reference something that maybe is not directly to what I sell. That's okay. As long as I can bring some expertise to them and I can get a conversation going, I'm good. Here's a question. Trust is such a key aspect of getting a prospect to switch from, wow, been using for years. What do you recommend to build trust in a matter of seconds? Here's the thing. Is it social proof? Here's the thing. Your reputation arrives before you do. In fact, I'm going to get to this here in just a second. So, Manuel, you're spot on with the timing of this because it actually happened to be the next piece I was talking about that you want to have a compelling website and social media presence that people want to follow up with you. I get a tremendous number of people who call me, for instance, and they want to do business with me. They, they're inquiring because they've seen me on LinkedIn. They've seen my LinkedIn presence. They've watched my videos. They've watched, they've read my books. In other words, they, I, I was talking to a company today that reached out to me and, and I could see that they had, they were looking at me because I noticed that they had looked at my LinkedIn profile. And when I was on the conversation with them, they had mentioned that they had been looking at my website. What does that tell me? See, what does that do? That helps create trust. But the way you create trust is you do what you say you're going to do and you do it with integrity. This means if somebody shares with you some information, that's proprietary information. I will, I will reference, oh, I've done other things in other companies. But you know what? I, Paul, I, I, I will never reveal those names. Because here's the thing. And, and I've had people challenge me, hey, what's the company that you did that for? I, I won't reveal that company's name. Because here's the whole thing. The person who asks you who that company is, is a person you can't trust. And once you offer up a name, what's that tell them? That tells them that, wait a minute. 
what are you going to tell other people about me? See, so trust is earned through the conversations you have and through the reputation you create before they reach out to you. Another question here. Uh, what does the hunter think is the best cold outreach method right now? It is the telephone, Sean. I still, I firmly believe it's the telephone. I, I really do. Now I'm going to use telephone, email, telephone, email, telephone, email, and I'm going to have that strong social media presence and so forth. But I really do believe the telephone. And I'll tell you what, we're recording this right now in August and uh, Friday afternoons in August, you know, it's summer in the Northern hemisphere. It's a great time to prospect. I love making, I love making phone calls on Friday afternoons. I, I get fewer people, but boy, the people I have, it's amazing the conversations I get. Hey, yeah, your reputation arrives before you do. Thank you, Manuel. I can't stress that enough. Make sure your LinkedIn profile, people always ask me, what's the best, what, what's the best strategy behind a LinkedIn profile? The best strategy is go out and look at 10 people that you absolutely respect, see what they have in their profile, you do the same. Now, no, no, you don't copy it word for word, but you, you look at the style they have. You look at what they do. In fact, later in September, I'm doing a special pop-up webinar with Bryn Tillman, who is without a doubt, I think, the industry-leading LinkedIn sales expert. We are getting together at the end of September to do a special event on that. And we've got a, actually a master class that's going to be coming out on that, a course on that. So stay tuned for that. But that's going to that's gonna help you out a lot there. Here's something else that's interesting. And I was talking briefly about this in terms of you create a compelling website, social media presence. People want to follow up you. And that means you post great content that moves you up in the SEO. In other words, you post. Now, does that mean you have to write it all? No, no. But what I'll many times do, and this is what I tell people, if you're busy, you're pushed for time. What you do is you take content that you like, maybe a news article or some of that, and you copy that and, and, and you share that in LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is a perfect tool with which to share. But you add your commentary. Add your commentary. Never repost something without putting your commentary on it. Because if all you're doing is reposting content, you're just a parakeet. You're just repeating what other people have said. You want your intellect, your intelligence to come through. And then what's great is I can use those comments and the questions and the, and the conversations I get into to come back and to be able to share that with people. You see, the whole goal is you want to be seen as the expert. You will get people who will respond to your phone calls, who will respond to your emails when, they're see, when they see you as the expert. Don't allow yourself to be seen as a vendor. This is absolutely key. Don't be seen as a vendor. Hey, we've got some other questions that have popped in. Let me get them up here. Something that works for me is starting the conversation by asking if caller has a few minutes and if this is a good time for a quick call. Total respect to time. Hey, you know what? That's a great strategy for some industries and some types of people. Uh, I love that strategy. Now, I personally don't use that, okay? I, I personally don't, don't. Because I tell you what, when, when people call me, and, and here's the reason people say, do I have a few minutes? I'll say, no, I don't. You, you, you're interrupting me. And if, if you can't engage me within five seconds, I don't want to hear from you. But see, Dan, for you, it works. Great. This is what's key. You use something that absolutely works for you. I, I sh talked about this last week in the, in, in the video I did. Go out to my YouTube channel. Go to last week's live session. And I talk about because there's some words that you can use when you're calling salespeople that you can't use if you're calling engineers. Some words that you can use when you're calling engineers, but you can't do it. Yeah. And, and hey, this is all content that we talk about and we share and, and I discuss in depth in the masterclass on phone prospecting. Now, I don't know. I, I'm just excited about this masterclass because it really is some great content. So don't hesitate to jump out there and check it out and check out all the other other stuff that is out there. Let me jump back over because we've got some more comments that have come in here. Um, yeah, Jay, I recently changed my LinkedIn cover to look perfect. Yes, so key. I was watching a webinar the other day and this webinar was put on by a person who was talking about how to leverage LinkedIn. And I went out to her profile and was like, you gotta be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. You know what's interesting? I immediately discounted everything that she was sharing with me, everything. 
because her LinkedIn profile wasn't professional. Her LinkedIn profile, she wasn't walking the talk. See, so great. I applaud you for doing that. I have a question. Um, in this case, most of the time, the answer you will get is no. What I prefer is, oh, this is good. Uh, let's see. Um, hi, I'm XYZ calling to see whether we can do business with each other and make profits. Yeah, see, there you go. See, that, that, that's a, 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 you know, again, it's finding a strategy that you feel confident. In fact, I just did a video on this today. The, the video was around prospecting. And what is the most important tool you have to have when it comes to prospecting? Is it the process? Is it the script? Is it the, uh, the software? Is what, and, and the answer, mindset. It's mindset. If you have the right mindset, it is amazing what you can do. Because you know what? It comes across much more confidently. It comes across so much more confidently. Yeah, yeah. See, what I wanted to share with you today is just a few things. And I ran through this fast. We get a lot. Every week, we're getting more and more comments like this. So I love it. I love it. But I tell you what, you're probably going to have to go back and catch the replay again. Uh, because I, I went through this stuff so fast. But here's the whole thing. You can get the phone to ring. But don't think for a moment that you're going to get the phone to ring on every phone call. When I mean the phone people to call you back. But I look at it this way. If I can get over the course of time, 5% of my prospects to be calling me back, that's huge, right? Think about that. That's huge. And there's been sometimes I've been able to get as high as 10%, depending on seasonality, who I'm calling, what I'm calling. Yeah, that's absolutely massive. Because if they pick up the phone and they call you, that means there's a measure of interest. That means there's a level of interest. That means they're that much further along to potentially becoming a customer for you. And that's absolutely huge. Hey, we got some more comments that have come in. Let me uh, pop this one up here. Let me get this up here. Uh, Mark, what's the best industry to sell digital marketing services to? Boy, that's that's all. You know what? I'll tell you what, almost any industry that's not working with dial phones. <laughs> uh, it, it, here's the whole thing. It's not the digital service. It's the outcome. It's the outcome that you're creating. Think, think about that. As you're looking at industries, digital services, what are the outcomes that people are going to create from it? And that's the questions. That's how you want to fashion your response. So it isn't so much the, the industry specific to digital services. It's the outcome that they're going to get. Um, I, I still see them hang up after asking them. Yeah. Hey, again, you're not going to get, let's be real. Anybody who sits there and says, oh, I have the perfect solution. Nobody ever hangs up on me or everybody calls me back. You know what? They're lying. I, I you know, we were talking about trust earlier. Uh, I, I, I'd be lying to you if I said I get every phone call returned. No, I don't. I just want to be having a fair shot at being able to make a difference. Yeah. But it really comes down to crafting the right response. Hey. Absolutely. I, I love this. What a great conversation today. Please go out to my web, go out to my website. You can type in learn.thesaleshunter.com or you can just go to thesaleshunter.com and, and up at the top, you'll see university click on it, but we got all kinds of masks. Every month we put out a new master class. It's amazing the number of people that are enrolling, checking it out. And it really is cool. And there's a lot of other things we've got coming up over the couple, next couple of months. Next month, we've got a, a follow-up masterclass, just how, how do you follow up. We have the LinkedIn masterclass. We have another class coming up on prospecting. We have another class on time set. We've got so many masterclasses and different variations of things coming up over the next three, four months. It's We just have fun building out this content. Hey, if you like this video, would you do me a favor? If you're watching on YouTube, um, subscri subscribe, um, click the, you know, yeah, button, you know, the favorite button, uh, throw a comment out on Facebook. If you're watching there, throw a comment out on LinkedIn. If you're watching it there, share it with other people. Because again, like I said, I started doing these a few weeks ago and like I can tell by the audience today, the audience is growing every, every week. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Sales is absolutely terrific. Why? Because we get to do one thing. We get to help others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. That to me 
is a kick in the pants. Hey, we got one more comment. I'm, I'm going to throw this other comment up there. Let, let's see. Uh, Mark, what, uh, what you think should be the percentage of branding or rapport building and trying to focus on closing a call? 80-20. That's kind of the general rule. That's kind of the general rule. I say in terms of communication, 80% is going to be just branding, putting information out there, 20% really flat out selling. But here's the whole thing. When you're branding, you're still selling. When you're sharing content, you're still selling. So it, it may not be as direct, but you're still out there. I look at it this way. I can share you content. I can help you. But the absolute best way for me to be able to help you is for you to become a client of mine. That's why, that's why strongly suggest my master classes because when you make the investment you begin to see additional value and when you make the investment i reward you by giving you additional value so again 80 20 but but even when you're building rapport you're still selling and the ultimate value is when the customer invests with you so hey thanks so much i want to say thank you to everybody who has been watching and I look forward to seeing many of you over in the Sales Hunter University. Take care.